Good afternoon, everybody. All moms and dads out there from Mama Magic here this afternoon. I'm Tashaira Murray, and I'm so very excited that you have decided to join me this afternoon as I chat to a very important topic, or rather chat to somebody about a very important topic, and that is um, about inclusion. So inclusion of all um, skin tones and races. Um, so if you're wondering what I'm talking about, let me backtrack a little bit. We're going to be talking this afternoon to Karen Tiernison, who has written this beautiful children's book all about having brown skin and curly hair. I'm very excited that Karen gets to chat with us today because I think this um, topic is something that is so um, important right now. And so without further delay, I would like for you to get to hear more from Karen. I'm going to just check if Karen is available and then I'm going to... Um, add her but um, please please do make sure that you pop any questions that you have for Karen please um, make sure that you 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 pop your questions down below and um, ask her all the questions you want to ask her she is um, very friendly I know that firsthand so please do we're going to just check okay I see Karen is there she's at Mumsy Boo if you're all wondering um, so let me see if I can add her. There we go. Everybody, thank you for following us this afternoon. I hope you are all staying warm and that you are all staying safe. So I'm just waiting for Mumsy Boo. Mumsy Boo is also Karen. Hi, Hello. Karen. You look beautiful. Thank you. You do too. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I'm very, very excited to have you here. It's wonderful to be with you guys, Tashera, and thanks to Mama Magic. Thank you to everyone for hosting me today. It's, it's exciting. It's wonderful to be here. You know, I wanted to stop and say that um, it is so important um, that we get to talk about this topic this afternoon. Not only have you written a children's book, um, but the, 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 the theme of the children's book is so pertinent to what we are facing in, as a world, really. And um, Mama Magic has been so amazing in allowing us to chat this afternoon about this topic. And it is the topic of, or in the title of your book. So I want you, before you go there, before we go into any of this, I want us to start this afternoon by you telling us who Karen is. <laughs> well, Karen is um, a mom of four daughters, uh, a husband to a very, very uh, busy, uh, sorry, a wife to a very, very busy husband and a, a, an executive who works long hours and works very hard. And life is very busy. It feels like it's been busier than ever during lockdown because You've got kids that are homeschooling and kids that are not homeschooling. And then some are going back to school and some aren't. And I also run a real estate company. Wow. Um, so that's in the, in, in the mix as well. Aside from being like really just a creative who wants to write and who wants to tell stories, tell stories to her children, tell stories about her children, and just tell stories about the world that children would understand. I love that. Corinne, you sound like a typical mom that is exceptionally busy. Um, so is it, is it safe for me to say that lockdown has been good to you? You know, I think in the very beginning, it was uh, a shock to all of our systems when it was level five, like it was for sort of for everybody. And then you adjust and you, you adjust to the new normal and then it changes again and you adjust again and then it changes and so for me, lockdown is really about uh, being resilient through change because we're in a constant state of flux and it's very, very worrying at times. Um, but in the beginning, I think lockdown was good for our family. All of a sudden you had all uh, six of us hunkered down into a house and we just really got to know one another, really got very close to one another. And then as time goes on and as the industry started to open and as the homeschooling got off the ground, wow, it was just an altogether different ball game a, a, a lot a lot more difficult to navigate still is you know I find it I find it very difficult to navigate at times you know um, but you, you get there and I think that a lot of people have a lot of grace with one another these days because 
you know, if you are sitting in on a, a Zoom call and it's an important work meeting and a little person comes and sits on your lap and says hi to everyone, you know, everybody kind of just accepts that as normal these days. So I, I rely a lot on the, the graciousness of other people during lockdown because I, I need that and I extend that to others. Yeah. Oh, I love that about you, Karen. You're always so very accommodating and very thoughtful. But I mean, I know a little bit about you. I know a lot about you. But I would like for you to just tell everybody, so where, where are you? Who's Karen? Where are you from? Um, what has brought you to this place in your life where you've written this book? Give us a little bit of background. So I've always loved words, you know, to share since I was a little girl and, and I think seeing my mom and my aunts join the library and, and reading all the time and exchanging books between themselves. There was always books around us and there was always a fascination with books. I think when I was growing up, there was not as much children's material as there is today. There's a very wide variety of kids' books out there for all ages. And we, we didn't have access to that, though we had access to the library, we didn't have that kind of variety. But my, my, my mom always was reading. And I think that's what, what sparked my love for reading. And then out of the love for reading was just this desire to tell stories and this desire to use the words. And so since, since a, a very young age, I've always written, I have a love for writing. And, um, and so that grew. And as time goes on, you know, it changes and uh, life gets in the way and all sorts of other things get in the way. I went, I went through um, on to, after high school, I, I went on to university. I became an attorney. I studied an LL, uh, a BA, an LLB, an LLM and got married and had kids. And then I was running a law firm. And so it was a lot happening. And, uh, you know, then the, the writing goes a little bit. And you don't write as often as you do. And then you have all these children. And then reading to them sparked that creativity again. And I started again. I love that. And do you think that when you, when you were now reading to your children, did you feel that there was sort of a gap in terms of, I suppose, themes that you were reading to your children that did not quite relate? How did you get to the place where you said, I want to write a book um, that relates to the children that I have? For sure. There was definitely a gap. So I would go out and I'd buy all these books. I'd go into all the bookstores and go and buy all these beautiful books, rhyming stories, picture books. And I just felt that there was a tremendous gap in what I needed to show them in the pictures of little girls in books. And there was no stories being told about, or, or, or too few of them out there that, that depicted little girls that looked like my little girls with their curly hair and their brown skin. And so I, I found that even of the toy industry, you know, and, and I would go out looking for those dolls, looking for those books, looking for those stories. And, you know, my husband traveled uh, quite a bit in, in the past few years. So when he went overseas for work, I'd say, look through the bookstores. Can you find anything? So he would bring stuff um, from overseas. And that was the books that we got. It was not readily available in South Africa. And I treasured them because they were so hard to find books that showed different identities in children that told stories about kids that looked like my kids. Um, yeah. And so I, I found that that was very important, that they needed to know that they had a place in the world, that they had a place in society, that there were other kids like them. And so that's why, that's why I, um, I wrote the book and, and how I got inspired to write the book, you know, it also just stems from the stories that, not all of my kids do look the same. And a common theme running through the book is that you don't need to look the same to be family. And it speaks to identity because not all of my kids look the same. They're all different shades in terms of their complexion. They have different strands of hair type yeah. in terms of their hair. And um, I just needed to make them, make them sure of their identity and know, well, I may look different from my sibling. I may look different from my mummy. But I'm me and I'm unique and that's great and that's to be celebrated and accepted. And I think when we teach that identity to our kids, you know, we also teach them not only to love and accept themselves, but also to accept others that look completely different from them. And so there's just not enough for me, especially in South Africa, that is, there's so much um, 
you know, when it comes to diversity, it's just fraught with so many places of hurt, uh, so many things that are so problematic politically, socially, and all of those things. And all of a sudden, I, I just feel like kids don't need to know all the, the heavier stuff. We just need yeah. to give them a basis to understand things simplistically. I absolutely think what she's saying is so powerful. I mean, um, as a woman of color myself, you know, I found myself growing up um, and having obviously cousins. And even just within that space, we all looked very different with different skin tones and different hair. And, you know, um, we have different backgrounds in us. And in, in as far as um, heritage, who you know, where our grandparents come from, et cetera, et cetera. And at times growing up, that can be very confusing. And like you say, you don't have, or we didn't have necessarily the resources to go back to, to say that actually this is what makes you so special. This is what should be celebrated. And I think that this is most likely what you wanted to highlight through this book. So again, for those that have just joined us, the book's name is I Have Brown Skin and Curly Hair. Show us, show us, Corinne. Yeah, I love, love, love that. So I have brown skin and I have, and have curly hair. And I mean, even just the, the, the curly hair um, top is obviously something that we can get into at length. But what I want you to talk to us a little about is, but what, what, what made you settle on that title? So I think the title um, is like, it's almost as if it's a statement. I have brown skin and curly hair. It's as if someone walked into the, to the room and said, this is who I am. <laughs> and I think it. very much for a little person, their identity and their idea of who they are is very much when, when, when they're very little based on how they look. You know, Absolutely. and that grows as their understanding of the world grows. Then they understand, oh, and I speak this language and this is my culture. And this is um, this is what my value system is. This is what I believe. This is what my parents have inputted. This is the school I go to. This is what I think about friends. This is what. And so your identity and your understanding of the world grows like it always does, even with adults. But when they're yeah. little, it's about how do I look? And not yeah. all kids. And it's true. The very small little ones, they don't really see color. They're just little people exploring. But as they grow, they begin to realize, I look this way. That child looks that way. This sister looks this way. This brother looks this way. And why? And that is something that I saw in my own kids. You know, my, my um, second born has got brown skin and curly hair. And my third born has got very fair skin and curly hair. And, yeah. you know, my second born said, oh, you know, mommy, Avi is adopted because she's, she's flesh skin, she's beige, and we're all brown. Wow. And I realized, wow, you know, I've got to, as a parent, I own this narrative. I've got to, to, to explain to them why they look the way they look, who they are, um, what, has, what has come down in their bloodline, their ancestry, to make them look and be and come to settle in this identity of this little girl. So when I chose the title, I have brown skin and curly hair, it is to say almost to the entire world, this is who I am. And I'm proud of me. You know, absolutely. This is, this is my identity. This is part of my identity. I have brown skin and curly hair. And, and, and it's something that you're proud of. It's something that's beautiful. It's something that should be celebrated. And it's like you're making a statement that my brown skin, my curly hair makes me me, makes me beautiful. And, and like you say, should be celebrated. I mean, Corin, I want to share with you and you know, I have two children as well. And my son, a lot of people would always comment and say that we look like twins. However, he's got a lot, his hair texture is, 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 is on the straighter side, if I will. And then um, we had our little girl, our, our little um, uh, Rose, who is completely um, fair skinned but has the tightest curls ever. And for me, 
as a person and as a mom and a woman, uh, uh, you know, a woman of color myself, but having had always kept my hair straight um, growing up because, you know, we were taught that that was the right way to do things. Um, having my little girl, I realized that, oh my gosh, you are so beautiful. Your curls are so beautiful. And in, a, in, in that way, I decided or started wearing my own hair curly. And the one day I actually did sort of blow dry my hair straight and my daughter came and she says, oh, you look like my Barbie. And I promise oh. you, I immediately, I immediately went and I made sure that I, you know, got my curls back. And I realized at that moment, it was so important for me to also celebrate and allow my daughter to realize that her hair is beautiful and that she should see her hair beautiful, which is why I believe this book, the topic is so pertinent for where we're at. Because even though we're living in 2020, we are living in a space where we still have to shape the narrative you know, where we still have to create that narrative for ourselves. And I think that's what you were doing this. That being said, who is your target audience? Who is this book for? So, I mean, I would like to say that this book is for all children. And the target audience is for children from the ages as young as four years old up to eight years old. Um, and I say all children because I think that the book, through its telling tells the story or parts of the historical um, the, or the history of South Africa. And so I think it's for all kids. I think it's for all of these children and their parents who will read to them and will be able to go into your family history, go into your ancestry and say, what is, what, what's in our family tree? Why do you look the way you look? Why do I look the way I look? Let's go back and look at that. And that's also another beautiful way of establishing a very strong sense of identity in your child for them to understand and to know who they come from. Who are these people? How did I come to be um, who I am? Love that. You know, I just want to say uh, thank you to everybody. Everybody is telling us that they love our curls. <laughs> and um, they just... Thanks, everyone. <laughs> thank you. Um, so, uh, is this Khumat? Uh, sorry, it says, I'm not sure why, but every time I watch Karen talk about her story, I get teary eyed. Thanks for seeing the diversity and telling the story. I love that. Thank you so much for that comment. Sure. You thank you, Gutham. Thank you. The, oh, Gutham, thank you. And you know, I, I mean, I also get teary eyed about this whenever I hear you speak and whenever we speak about this topic, because I remember um, one of the sessions I came to hear you speak about your book and you spoke about your heritage in as far as your great, great grandmom, if I'm mistaken, having come from um, St. Helena. And that had sparked something um, in me to go and dig a little bit deeper in, in my family. Wow. History. And it's exactly like you say, once you have um, a sense of identity of who you are and where you come from, you can almost wear that banner very proudly. And it makes you in a way that much more self-assured of who you are and you can face and deal with things, I suppose, in a different way because you, you take pride in who you are. And I believe that that is what you're doing through your book. Tell, tell me, um, how has your own children received the message from this book? So, you know, my kids are very, um, my kids are very, well, my youngest is quite young. She's three years old. And, and then I've got a five-year-old and I've got um, a seven-year-old and a 10-year-old. And so my 10-year-old, you know. So four girls, four girls. Four girls, four girls. My 10-year-old, Michaela, she is, she's got a very deep understanding and she's very intuitive and she understands the book. She understands everything about the book. She, is, she has really gone on to, um, she has really gone on to explore uh, the family history. She wants to know what it's all about. She asks questions about it. And I think it's made her understand, and she's got a, a good diverse set of friends, why each one of them looks the way they look. She, she understands that and she's very accepting of that. And you know, um, the younger one, Kez, who is uh, uh, eight years old, uh, seven years old, turning eight, 
you know, she's also got an understanding. It's a bit more limited. I think she doesn't perhaps get the finer nuances. And then, of course, the three-year-old just likes the pictures. And the five-year-old understands very clearly that it doesn't matter what you look like. Because, because I did a reading for her class at school. And another little boy also just said, it doesn't matter what color you are. And so after we, we read and discussed the book, and I think that at a five-year-old's level, that's very important for them to understand. And then as they grow, they can understand more um, about it. And I think that was really the aim of the book is to lay those different foundations and those layers so that you can build it as a foundation to discuss the harder topics afterwards and the more difficult topics afterwards. Absolutely. And, you know, I love what Guthum is saying is that we need to understand where we come from because that helps us to be whole. And like, you know, what, like we were saying, it, it gives us a good platform, a basis from, from which to build on as we grow. And, you know, we, we face different things as humans, but that once we have our, our identity set, it's easier to face the bigger things. And um, I love that. I love that. I don't know if you want to comment on that, but um, the message, I know you've mentioned it, but just, Go through that again. What is the message that you want to be 100% clear is the message of this book? You know, I think there are, the, the book touches on many different aspects. So it touches on diversity. It touches on identity for children, what we look like. But it also touches on uh, the history of the country, the history, my personal history against the backdrop of this land. And so as an adult, I see those things and I can okay. frame those things. And as a parent, you can highlight those aspects to your child as you read the book. But really the way the book ends, and, and, I'll, and I'll read it, and I think that's the crux to your, to your question. It says, um, she, she says, they look at my curly hair and smile, and then they go quiet for a while. I look up bravely and say, this is why we all look this way. But anyhow, it matters not what kind of look I've got. Don't you see? I'm unique, free to be me. We all look different, but we're one family. And I you think inside your family, inside your society, inside the whole world, there's a place for you. There's a reason why you look the way you look. And you can draw from, I love going into stories of my, uh, my ancestors, looking at who these people were. I draw strength from that. I say, wow, look at this woman who at this young age got on a boat and sailed all the way from St. Helena. She came here, had 10 kids and never went back, never saw her family again, never saw the land of her birth again. And she started right. a whole family, a whole generation. That must have taken a tremendous amount of guts and bravery. Cheers. That blood flows through my veins. Wow. That blood flows through my daughter's veins. You know, and I just think, wow, with stories um, that are as encouraging as that, what, what can we give to our daughters? What can we give to our sons? What stories in our own histories that we can look to and say, these are the heroes um, wow. in your own personal story? Um, and that blood flows through your veins. It's, it's just, I think going into family history is amazing. And not just that, just presently how you look who you are that identity that's you and that's okay and that's beautiful and that should be celebrated well karen you really do give us teary eyes because what you said and how you read it it is so beautiful and what i what i want to say about it, it it's empowering it's empowering because we have so much to celebrate as a human race but especially when we go into the intricacies of who we are. Um, and a book like this gives us that platform to do that. And um, I want to ask you, um, please firstly lift the book again so we can just see the cover so that when everybody goes, everybody, this is the book, the beautiful book. I have brown skin and curly hair. Tell us, Karen, how and where can we get hold of this book? So this book... Um is available at Exclusive Books. It's available at CNA, and um, it's part of the Homebrew 
the exclusive books homebrew um, promotion. It's in store right now. So you can go to any exclusive books all over the country and you can pick up your copy. It's available in four languages. It's in English, Afrikaans, it's Kosa, and um, it's Zulu. Wow. So, yeah, Great by all stuff. means. Great stuff. And Karen, um, you, I wanted to ask you, um, can you download, is it available for download and e-copy? A lot of people have been asking if it's something that you can get on e-copy. Not at the moment, not at present. You can't get it on e-copy, but you will be able to order it online uh, so that it can be delivered to your house via Uber Eats. I was very surprised when I heard that. <laughs> you can come with your pizza. <laughs> it can come via Uber Eats. And um, you. Uh, I'm not sure if you can um, order it via Amazon yet, but you can also order it online from exclusive books. No, I'm very excited to hear that because I've had a couple of friends who live all the way in Paris. Um, Clarissa, if you're listening, um, she's been like, get us this book, send it through to me. I have to have Wonderful. This. And, and, you know, this is the, the, the beauty of the book because I believe that, like you say, we don't, it's not such an easy thing to just go into the bookstores and find books that represent a different part of our, our nation, so to speak. You know, um, the representation for women of color, and I'm going to say it, is, is it women or ch uh, men or children of color, it's quite small. So this is so, so huge, you know, to be able to find a piece of literature that you can say, my children, this is, you know, a little bit of who you are and you can relate to this. So good, good ups to you. Well done, Karen. I'm so, so, so proud of this book. I want to ask you, um, so as we kind of wrapping up, do you think, firstly, there will be more books to come from Dear Karen? Definitely. There are definitely more books. I think that the book's been very well received and I'm very humbled by that. And I'm very thankful for that because it took a long time for me to write the book um, because I was going into it and researching it, but also really thinking about the topic and how I needed to tell a story that, not just the story, a theme that is very difficult, I think for parents, I think for educators, for teachers, it's a very difficult theme to break down for little people. So for yeah. me, it was very important that you're able to give this to a child and that they can understand it, they can enjoy it, and that it can become a, a talking point between a, a parent and their child, a, a discussion point. Let's, let's talk about this. Let's yeah. think about this. Think about who you're with. And, and so for sure, I've, I've seen that this is definitely something that, that I'm passionate about teaching my kids about. But I also think that race and, and issues of identity and issues of diversity is something, uh, and not just race, uh, it can be all kinds of diversity. It's, it's, your, it's your language, it's your culture, yeah. you know. And so those, those issues are very pertinent in our day and in our time and especially in our, in our country. You know, where there are so many families with diverse backgrounds, where children look different. I mean, this is a South African story because this is the part of so many South African families that they experience on a day-to-day -day basis. And so, yes, there are more books um, in the making. There are more books on diversity because I feel like there's a great need for those stories to be told to Absolutely. our little people. And Guthum is saying, right, Karen, right. We need to go... <laughs> And you know, Thanks, um, them. <laughs> yeah, good. you know, Corin, I also want to to ask you to sort of give us. You always encourage, even myself. You know, write your stories, write your narrative, write down your history, write down where you come from. You are actually, um, as you've mentioned earlier, a lawyer, and then you went into blogging, and now you know um, writing. What sort of advice do you have? Um, for, for anybody that feels that they want to write their story, how easy is it to transition from those various sort of, I would like to say, careers? You know, I think every writer who's written has wanted to do it full time. And a lot do. They're very blessed. Not everybody can do that. Not everybody... Um, writes full time. It would be wonderful. I think I would be. I'd love it if I could just <laughs> way and write. And it's, it's a it's a wonderful way of doing things. Um, so for me, because it's always been part of something that's in my heart, and I feel it's intrinsically part of me. There are stories inside of me that I have to come out, and all of those things are are are, are embedded in me and part of who I am. 
but so are the other things, you know, um, uh, becoming an attorney, uh, going into university, uh, becoming a businesswoman later on. Blogging, of course, was just a natural go-to for me. Blogging was natural for me because I love to write, you know. And so writing about my little people was just a very natural thing. They're so inspirational, really, and they're so funny and humorous <laughs> and amazing to have. Um, and it's also an amazing outlet for writers. And so I got, the transition was very natural for me because I write naturally. Yes. Um, but at the same time, you know, when you are crafting your story or putting it together, you know, the building blocks of story writing, when you are actually constructing this, that took some, some um, doing. And I really went on courses uh, to learn how to do that because I felt that I needed to empower myself. And I feel that about, about anything that you, you, you go through, if you really want to do something, I would say to anyone, if it doesn't feel like it's coming naturally or you do feel like you have the story inside of you, but you're not quite sure how to tell it or um, how to get it across or what you should be thinking about necessarily in its construction, then you should be going and go through a course because it's going to point you in the right direction. And that's what I did. Um, and so even though I had been in all of these different uh, career paths <laughs> and it's brought me to this place, I knew that I was, since I was a little girl, I knew I had to write. I knew that that's what I wanted to do. And so for me, it's a dream come true. Um, and it also tells me that, you know, we are capable of doing almost anything that we put oh, yeah. our minds to. Almost anything, you know. Um, and, and when you do do that, when you do say, all right, what is it that I need? And I'm going to get it done. You can. So... I just say to people, live your best life, whatever that is out there, whatever is in your heart to do, you know, empower yourself to do it. Start putting the building blocks in place. Oh, Karen, it was so amazing chatting to you. And I can't even believe that our time has run out, but wow. I want to say to you once again, for sharing your heart um, behind the book and, um, like we have mentioned earlier on, it is a book for all children. It's a book for all um, little girls and little boys who have just questions about themselves. Because as you mentioned, the book sort of is creates a gateway for you to discuss their 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 family history and and all that as well. Um, I kind of just disappeared. <laughs> I still hear your voice. Okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that, but thank you so very much, Karen. Karen, um, I want to just remind the audience that you are um, Karen Tienison and you blog at Mumsy Boo and your book is available. I have brown skin and curly hair at exclusive books. So please do have a look out. Karen, thank you so very much for joining me this afternoon. Our time has run out. I think maybe that was Instagram trying to tell me that the time is done. Is there any closing, closing words that you'd want to leave us with? I just want to say thank you for hosting me. To Shara, it was a pleasure. It always is a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for hosting me. Thank you, Mama Magic, for hosting me today. I really appreciate it. I appreciate the platform. I want to say to parents, you know, that uh, we can parent differently. Um, I'm not saying that there was necessarily anything wrong with the way our parents parented us, but I think that there are pertinent conversations that need to be had with our kids. Absolutely. And we can do that. And it doesn't have to be in the form of a lecture. It doesn't have to be in the form of a sit-down conversation. It really can be through storytelling, through a fun, right. beautiful way that allows them to see the world and see themselves in it and find their place in it and be firm in their understanding of who they are and accepting of who they are. Oh, Karen, that's amazing. Thank you so, so, so very much. And um, thank you. I'm going to ask you to wave goodbye to everybody here. And I just want to say thank you to everybody for um, having joined in this afternoon. Thank you so much to Karen who has shared such a, a beautiful book with us. It really is a beautiful book. I do encourage you to go and go out there and purchase it and make sure that you have these discussions and uh, with your children and your little ones. And um, thank you so much for Mama Magic. Um, as always, it's always a pleasure to be here with you. I am Tashera Murray. If you want to read more about me, please go to my page, Mama, Ma Mama is Me. And um, thank you for joining us this afternoon and we will see you soon be safe goodbye